I had a fellow Spoonie reach out to me recently rather discreetly asking about DHEA and libido and the side effects of both and how they're interconnected and just asking a little bit about that. And because for some reason this is something that's not talked about when it comes to adrenal disease or Addison's disease, at least I'm not finding it very often, and it's something that is a very real serious topic and we should be talking about it. And the fact that somebody asked and wasn't sure if it was okay to ask made me realize we really need to talk about it. And so I'm gonna share my experience. And again, this is my own personal experience that I've experienced in my own body and what knowledge I've gathered through my own research. And I'm not a medical professional. So I'm just gonna experience or share my experience with DHEA because I've had such a interesting experience and talk a little bit about libido and things like that with Addison's disease. So if that is a conversation that you do not wanna have or do not feel comfortable hearing, you don't have to partake in this video, but I think it's really important that we talk about so people realize that they're not alone and or we can communicate with one another and perhaps find things that resonate and work for each other. So yeah, that's what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> so I've mentioned, I've had a very interesting experience with DHEA. I guess let's say DHEA, let's start there. DHEA is another one of the hormones that if you have Addison's disease or adrenal disease that you may or may not be producing. Um, my understanding is that if you have Addison's disease, you are not producing DHEA, which is a long hormone name that I can't even attempt to pronounce. So DHEA is what we will call it. And this hormone is also attached to estrogen and testosterone and is theoretically connected to uh, weight gain or skin and hair growth and bone and stamina and libido. That's my understanding. <laughs> so that's what DHE is. It is theoretically, what I understand, not a necessary hormone in order to survive. Whereas like the hydrocortisone, the cortisol replacement is necessary to be alive with Addison's disease. DHEA is what I have heard doctors call a luxury hormone that you don't need to survive, but if you want to take it to thrive, you can. That's what it is. So when I learned a little bit about DHEA, I wanted to try it. And my doctor at the time was not a particularly um, focused person with my Addison's. Uh, it did, I was one of his first patients ever with Addison's and it was very clear that we were walking on new territory together. Because I didn't know better, I trusted him, and he wrote a prescription for me to take 100 milligrams of DHEA today, uh, every day. So I did that for a while, and I experienced some very severe side effects immediately. Uh, insomnia. My skin was so incredibly oily and greasy, and I had acne everywhere. I developed this skin rash, almost like a cross between eczema and psoriasis, all along my hairline. It was a very sensitive bump that I could barely touch without being in excruciating pain. And I was in, my head was so itchy. So those were the, the negative side effects. The positive side effects from that experience were I had more energy, I had more stamina, and for the first week, my libido did increase but it got so severe because the insomnia and the negatives outweighed the positive that I was like, this is wild. So we reached back out to my doctor and he realized he meant to uh, prescribe me 10 milligrams a day and not 100. So that was that mistake. We made the shift and I still was experiencing some of the negative side effects. So after going to the Mayo Clinic and shopping around with some new endos, they talked about different amounts of DHEA you can take, different times of day, and that it's really 
Not an exact science, it's different for every person, very similar to the hydrocortisone levels and figuring out. And that it was kind of up to me what I wanted to do. So I experimented and played and I tried many different things. I tried taking 25 milligrams a day, I tried taking 50, I tried taking 10, and I tried taking it every other day, every three days. And the sweet spot that I really landed on for me personally was taking five milligrams every one to three days at random kind of when I felt I needed that little extra boost and that that's what I would do. If I found that I would do that for more than like a couple weeks at a time, all those negative side effects would start piling up for me. The insomnia, and when I say insomnia, I mean I would sleep for maybe 30 minutes a night, which is excruciatingly horrible when you're so exhausted and the acne was back and the oily skin was back and the sensitive head pain was back and it didn't outweigh the positives. So yeah, it was just an experiment and I have found for the most part, I don't really take it. I take it every now and then if I feel like I need it. It is not something I take day to day. It is not something I take week to week. Play it by ear. I found that if I take it the week before my cycle and during my cycle, it really helps me and my body personally have a little bit extra umph through that time period. And that's been really helpful. Now, yeah, let's talk about the libido portion of that, which again, this is just my experience and I'm not a scientist. So obviously when you have a hormone disease of some kind or a hormone stunting condition, all of those hormones are going to be affected in some way, shape, or form. I'm not saying that everybody with that has libido issues. I have talked to many who do. And I just want to say that that, to me, is normal. My libido is pretty null, to be completely honest. I am not really sad about it or mad about it. Um, it's okay, I'm not ashamed, it is just a part of my body. It's not my fault, it is not my partner's fault. Totally love and adore and completely attracted to my partner and drawn to them. It's just those hormones that make you, that literally turns everything on, <laughs> aren't working. And that's not our fault, it's just another part of our condition, at least in my experience and what I've heard. And so as soon as I acknowledged that and understood that, I was okay with it. And as long as I'm doing the things that I need to do to manage my body, and I found that if I am being physically active, if I am mentally taking care of myself with meditation and um, slowing down and reducing stress in my life, and being really diligent, diligent about my own personal self-care, that uh, my libido may not be there, but I am down for those activities. I guess I'll just put it that way. I, yeah, I guess that's the best way to say it. It's not like the, it's there. It's just that I'm, I have the energy to do it and it's cool and I'm up for it. But it's not something that, it's, I really just want to state, it's not something that we should be ashamed of because that's not our fault. It's not our fault that our bodies aren't working in certain ways. And if you find that DHEA does support you and support your libido, which it does when I take it, totally supports that. And I'm like back to 21 year old Vanessa. <laughs> and if that resonates with you and those side effects, maybe you don't experience those side effects. Maybe you experience different ones. It'll be different for every single person you have to decide what works best for your body. And I hate saying that, and I hate saying it's not an exact science, but that's what I have found the case is. I am super happy with the amount of DHEA I take when I take it. It is few and far between, maybe three to five times a month. But I have found that it doesn't necessarily resonate with me. The research that I have done has said, said that DHEA can boost libido, muscle mass, bone mass, skin, improved skin, and hair. But I've also heard the flip side, that it can cause skin issues, hair issues, 
Um, but I haven't heard anything negative about the stamina or libido. So I guess those are theoretically still positive. But I really just want to start this conversation more than anything. I'm not an expert on this, and I really think that we need to talk about it. What is your experience? What has your change been like? What is your transformation in your body been like? How does it make you feel? How are you coping? How are you working through it? And what can we do to support each other through it? Because that's what it's really all about, is supporting each other and helping one another on our journey. So I'm really glad that this friend reached out and asked this question because even though I don't have all the information on this topic, I am totally open and happy to talk about this topic and really any topic because these conversations need to happen. We need to get connected to our bodies in every way, shape and form as best that we can so that way we can best support our healing and honor where our new body is at. So please feel free to ask anything at any time. I'm always happy to communicate and work together to sit in our bodies and figure it out. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for being here. And please just light and love on your journey and know that you are not alone. You are taking this one day at a time with the rest of us. And we are all just doing the absolute best that we can. Thank you guys so much for being here.